Hey, I'm Jason from Fuzzlord, and today in this video we're going to be putting together a one-knob fuzz pedal from start to finish. So we're going to go over the tools that we're going to need, some basics on soldering, putting the tag board together, the wiring, and drilling the enclosure. And if you follow along, I don't think you're going to have any problem building your first fuzz pedal. I'm going to leave a link in the description to the Tag Board Effects website, that way you can pull it up and follow along and also know what parts you're going to have to order, all the values and stuff. Before we get started though, I just want to give a big thank you to all of the Patreon supporters that help make this channel and videos like this possible. I really appreciate all of you. And if you want to support this channel, you can check out the Patreon page, link in the description also, or just head on over to FuzzLordEffects.com and check out some of the t-shirts and other stuff we have. Let's get started with this video. My friend Brett is going to be doing the building. He's built a couple pedals on his own and then I kind of just wanted to catch him right now, uh, now that he's pretty comfortable putting together these tag board effects pedals, but is still fairly new to it. So it gave me a lot more insight as to what you might be wondering putting your first pedal together. So let's get started on this video. So we're gonna be able to build this pedal today with a few basic hand tools, like some needle nose pliers, some snippers, parts cutters. These are really good for snipping wires and cutting off the leads of resistors and caps and transistors and stuff on the board. A pair of wire strippers. These are the kind that I like to use that uh, Brett has been liking also, but whatever kind of wire strippers you have. Of course, you're gonna need some solder and a good soldering station. So today we're using the Hakko, uh, what is this? FX888D, and uh, we got some solder fume extraction going on. So let's switch over to Brett. He's gonna start working on the board, and uh, we're gonna knock this pedal out. This is Brett, and he is gonna start building this pedal. So what you got going on, man? Uh, so what I'm gonna start off by doing is I'm looking for um, the actual grid size we'll be using on the strip board that'll be shown in the tag board effects blueprint. Um, it's pretty common practice I've noticed to use a box knife or a knife of some sort to score this if you don't have a saw. I personally have come across a method of doing it that I prefer where I just take a solid metal straight edge and I'll line it up on the outline of the grid, one outside of what you actually need. because you. Um, so you want to kind of line up in the center of the holes on the line that you'll be breaking across. So something like so. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'll find a hard table ledge and you just push and give, I'm gonna have to stand up for some leverage. Push and a clean snap. So this is the tag board that Brett got together and he pointed out an amazing thing that I've kind of forgotten about. When you're working from these tag board layouts, um, they're kind of showing us like a 3D view through to the bottom. So we're gonna populate the parts up top like that, but for the trace cuts that we need to cut out that like basically break the connection between the different rows, we can mark them from the top with a sharpie, uh, just like it's shown, but then we need to flip it over and get the right drill holes corresponded, drilled out. Uh, I built a delay pedal four times in a row years ago because if you get this wrong and you're viewing it from the wrong side, it flips over all the connections for the ICs and stuff. That will cause a lot of problems when you get to the troubleshooting phase of your first pedal. You just, you learned that the hard way too, didn't you? It's a rough one. And yeah. I got the pedal done and was really excited to have it tested out and stuff. And I spent about two hours of brainstorming on it. And I, I had to take a night off and it was throughout the night. I was actually talking with Jason and he mentioned something uh, about the cuts perhaps being backwards that led me to the IC being inverted. This is one of the spots where you're like the most common place to make a mistake. So just... Take some time, think about that, play Battleship, mark your little holes, make sure they go in the right spots. We're building from the top, but we're looking through to the back of the board. So we need those dots to be there, but when we actually go to drill the drill it out and flip it over, be careful that we don't invert everything. So right now Brett is taking a little drill bit to one of the marked spots on the back of the board to do those trace cuts the red dot shown on the tag board. You can use a drill. Uh, 
it's also perfectly okay to use it uh, just to drill bit by hand like Brett's doing right now. So the next thing Brett is going to do is add the little jumpers. If you look on the picture from Tagboard, those black lines are actually jumper wires. So you connect, uh, they basically make a connection from one point of the tag board to the other. So go ahead and get your two jumper wires installed now that you have your three trace cuts made. So the board is prepped, has the jumper cuts and, I'm sorry, the trace cuts and the jumper wires just like the photo. And we're gonna start populating the parts. Be amazed by the hot rod of the soldering station world. We go from zero to hella. And man, we could like time this, huh? Get a stopwatch. Get a stopwatch, how fast does it go to zero to 600? That is why hackos are cool. Uh, they got a digital readout on them and we're using unleaded solder today, right? And so we're gonna have the iron set pretty high. If you don't have a digital readout, just set your iron hot because lead free solder melts at a hotter temperature. If you're using leaded solder, you can go to about like 625. So when you are soldering, it's good to tin the tip of your soldering iron. And that just means you just touch a little bit of the solder into the tip. It just uh, fills all the little gaps and everything on the iron and uh, makes it easier to do. So, so now Brett is gonna start populating the parts into the tag board. What is the easiest thing to do is install parts by their height. So we started off with the jumper wires and now Brett's gonna go through with a first pass and install the resistors. Then we'll go through after that and do the next tallest thing, which would be the smaller capacitors, like the stuff in the Pico Farad value. And then we'll do the film caps, which are unpolarized. This is gonna be the 220 nanofarad and the 680 nanofarad. And uh, after that, we'll install the transistors and the caps. And I'm realizing that we want to use sockets, I think, on this build for the transistors. So we might put those in after the resistors. So Brett just put a resistor in through the hole. You got flipped over the back and then I usually bend the leads a little bit. There you go. Then you can imagine you do all of that. All the resistors are installed and then we'd flip it over and solder one. So Brett's gonna go ahead and install the resistors and then we'll see what that looks like after this first layer is done. All right, that's all the resistors installed, the first layer. So we're gonna flip it over and solder them now. So all the resistors are installed and now we're gonna snip the backs of them. Not good for camera angle, but try and keep them from all good. launching everywhere. Next up is the little ceramic caps. So this is gonna be the 150 picofarad and the, oh, there's only one. False alarm, that's it. So instead of just soldering the transistors direct to the board, Brett is installing sockets. This is just something we can solder in and then plug the transistors in. This will just make for some fun tweakability later so that we can check out some different transistors. We can do some tone testing of the transistors. If that one's ceramic, you could use film also. So Brett's gonna get those soldered and then we'll move on to the next layer. So this is coming together nice and we're almost done with the board. So Brett's got the polarized caps stuck in there. Uh, Polarized caps only go in one way, meaning there's a positive side of the component and a negative side. The striped side that you can see right there, 
that's the negative side. So make sure you put that in corresponding to the little gray slash on the uh, tag board layout. Next up, we're gonna be drilling out the enclosure. Be sure you wear safety glasses when you're doing this. And something that I think is helpful after you measure out where you want everything to go, I'm gonna let you figure out where you want everything to go on your pedal because that's like a big part of the fun in uh, doing this is like creating what it's gonna look like and planning all that out. So measure out your enclosure, make some marks with pencil, use a speed square or something to help you draw straight lines. And then go through with a metal punch where you need your holes to be. Uh, knock it with a hammer. That just gives a little indentation on the enclosure. And that way when you're drilling out the holes of the enclosure, your drill bit doesn't like jump around at all. This is super helpful, especially if you're using a hand drill, not a drill press like the one we're using in this video. So Brett got the enclosure all measured out and now he's using a metal punch to um, punch the holes for the box. It makes it a, so where it's a lot easier to use your uh, drill. Makes it to where you can use a hand drill and have things go real smoothly. So get your box prepped. Uh, we're gonna do this and then get it drilled out and meet you back once we're ready to get the hardware installed to the enclosure and do the off-board wiring before we do the board install. Sometimes it's nice to keep the back of the pedal on, uh, especially if you're working in an apartment like I used to do so many times using my little battery powered drill because if you have the back of the lid on, it catches a lot of the metal shavings. All right, let's catch back up once we get the enclosure ready and we're ready to start installing the hardware. It's for all you ASMR weirdos out there. Now we're switching over to a step bit. These like Christmas tree bits. You can pick these up online or at Harbor Freight. And um, they're really great for pedal making because they go large enough to do the foot switches and the DC jacks. So after you have your tag board assembled, so we got all of our components and our little circuit board and our wires connected, uh, and we got our enclosure together, the thing that I find most helpful is to go ahead and install the input and the output jacks to the enclosure, uh, the bypass switch, the LED, and the power jack. So the input and output jacks are gonna be wired to the switch. You can go ahead and take care of that. A couple of the ground connections, and I'm going to leave a link in the description to the off-board wiring diagram that Brett was following from Tagboard Effects website. There's a bunch of different ways to do this, so I'm not going to tell you that this is the only way to do it. Um, but this is a diagram that will show you where the input and output wires are going to connect from the jacks to the switch. Uh, where the LED is going to connect and some of the ground connections like to connect those parts in the box and the power jack. So get that wired up first, get your jacks installed, get your switch installed. And something that I think is really helpful is uh, checking your pedal right then. Even without the circuit board in the pedal, when the pedal is in bypass mode, it should pass a guitar signal. So you might save yourself a little headache right now before you install that board, plug your guitar into it and make sure that you can get a clean signal through it in the off mode. So get that taken care of, then we're gonna install the circuit board and connect the wires to the power jack, the stomp switch, and of course the potentiometer. So in this portion of the video, I'm showing you how to use your multimeter to do a continuity test. But uh, with the way the microphone was pointing, you can't actually hear it beep like I was hoping to. So I wanted to show you, on most multimeters, there's gonna be a continuity mode. Let me see which one that is. That's that red one right there. Looks like a little speaker. So you're gonna have some sort of version of this on your multimeter, and all this is used for, it's called a continuity test, is that it 
lets you know if two things connect. So in the next portion of the video, this is what we'll be doing and this is how you can use your multimeter to see if things are connected uh, like you want them to be. Let's imagine there's a wire going from one place to another or it's going through the switch and we're wondering is this connecting the way we think it is? We'd hook up the two places in question and if it beeps, they're connected. So that's how you do a continuity test or also called a beep test with your multimeter which is one of the most helpful things you can learn how to do for working on pedals or guitars or anything in electronics. So if you need to pick up some tools for this project or you just want to know more about the specific ones that I was using in this video, I put links in the description. That way you can check out my soldering station, pliers, snippers, all that kind of stuff. All right, we're getting this uh, pedal assembled with the switches and jacks and stuff, but I just wanted to give everybody a quick little helpful tip here on figuring out on any jack which lug is which. So I have my multimeter in the continuity setting, also the beep mode, meaning when you touch the two leads together, beep beep, it beeps, meaning we have continuity. The sleeve of any jack, as in the center part that we can touch, like that we would put in the jack, the sleeve, is the ground. So take your one of your multimeter leads, put it in the sleeve like that, like I'm holding it, and then, oh man, I should have bought a lottery ticket today. That is the negative right there, the, uh, this one on this jack. So the other lead would be the positive. So just remember the sleeve of a jack is the ground. The tip, which we can't see because this is an enclosed jack, is the signal. All right, so we're gonna get it going and then do the offboard wiring. I'll leave a link in the description to the offboard wiring um, schematic that we're following, just so you know where to connect the ground wires from the jack. Uh, the signal wire will go to the, the stomp switch and the LED, etc. We'll have our inputs and outputs from the jack. Where's the jack? Go into the circuit board. Then we'll have the DC jack and the volume knob. So uh, again, just follow along with the tag board diagram and we'll catch back up when we get a little more done. So it's good to go ahead and connect any of your little jumper wires you need for your stomp switch and maybe your LED um, before you put the circuit in the box. And then we can go ahead and do things like add the input and output jacks and um, wire those up before, they install, before we install the board. So this is the circuit board with its wires on it. Uh, it's a lot easier to go ahead and just add some wires to the board with it outside of the box and just give yourself some extra room to, you can always trim it, strip the wire, then install it as you need. So where are we at now? Looks like we're going to install the jacks. And so next it's going to be installing the jacks, the potentiometer, and, uh, and then running the ground wire from DC jack to the input ground, then from input ground over to what will be the output ground, and then an output ground that will run down completing the ground circuit on the switch, and then we'll be running the 9 volt lines and completing the wiring on the LED light, Cool. which I like to just go ahead and take a little section of that strip board that we broke off earlier and set it up as a nice convenient little resistor mount for the LED. Just tidies it up, makes it a lot easier to actually get it in there. So. Cool. So um, you're going to have to look up your own offboard wiring scheme. Again, I'm going to link to the one that the switch is following because I'm guessing it's off the tag board yep. site. Uh, when you're running your ground wires, you want to avoid a ground loop. So what is a ground loop, you might ask? Well, it's a loop in the ground. 
We have a bunch of different little ground points we have to connect in these pedals, and with the way these are built, they often don't give us like extra pads on the PCB to just to connect all the grounds to one point, like it would be in like a manufactured pedal. So we need to connect all these grounds together. What you want to avoid is making a loop. So we got a ground over here, a ground over here, and a ground over here. We can connect the ground from here to there, and from here to there. And then one of these points to over here, and you see that is a straight line. But if we're con to connect a ground from here to here to here, and then straight across to, that would be a loop, a circle. Uh, avoid doing a ground loop. It's not the end of the world, but it can cause some uh, noise, motor boating issues from a ground loop. Food for thought. Run your grounds, connect them. If they go in a straight line like a street, that's wonderful. If you got a thing where you make like a roundabout where you connect your ground here, 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 and then back across and then out to this way, we're making a circle and that is bad. Circle's bad, square's good. Brett has a nice drawing that he did uh, and this is just the off-board wiring from Tagboard Effects. So that'll just cover how your input and output jacks are hooked up to the switch, how the inputs and outputs of the circuit board are hooked up to the switch, and then of course we're going to have 9 volt ground the LED wire and then connect the potentiometer to the circuit board. So I have faith in you, you can do this, just follow the steps and uh, carefully check out the diagram. So there we go, there's the stomp switch, uh, the offboard wiring that goes up to the jacks, the power jack, and the tag board. I think we might put a little piece of double-sided sticky foam tape on the back to stick this down and we're going to install the transistors into the sockets. Uh, be mindful of your orientation and we're going to box this up and hear what it sounds like. This is the Black Arts Dark Ritual Fuzz specifically that we're following in this video, but this kind of belongs to a whole family of fuzz faces, like the Fuzz Lord Void Master uh, and a whole bunch of other ones out there. This pedal I think is really cool because there's no bias control on the circuit board. Usually on these fuzz face type pedals, there's a bias control. It's kind of like adjusting the idle on an engine of where we're running at park. Uh, and this one doesn't have one, so I think this is a great first pedal for someone because you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff or dial this pedal in. And it's also tuned really well to work with guitar or bass with all of the components and the capacitors that they chose setting the frequency response. Alright, we got the pedal built. Let's go ahead and plug it in and hear what it sounds like. Brett's going to play some riffs, I'm going to play some riffs. I really appreciate you watching this video and uh, drop a comment below and let me know what you thought and how is this build going for you if you're going to try it.
for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. And before we wrap it up, I just want to give a big thank you to all of the Patreon supporters who help support this YouTube channel. If you want to know more about it, there's a link in the description. Um, otherwise, I'll talk to you in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. And just wanted to give a big thank you to everyone's names who uh, we're running on the screen right now. And our producer level supporter, Veyu Slavic, as well as all the awesome companies that we work with here at Fuzzlord Effects. I'm Jason, I'll talk to you in the comments and I'll see you next week.